but is on septic. And that's why it's R10 CU conditional use. Uh, some hydric soils. Again, sewer would have to be extended 1,200 feet north to the subject property. The detailed site plan really shows um, the proposed plaza building, which is roughly 7,150 square feet, more than adequate parking. Um, it doesn't show exactly where the gas pumps at this time are going to be, but it does show the two diesel pumps uh, where you see the cursor and the adequate buffering. Uh, the only ex out of the ordinary condition is if there is commercial development to the north or to the southwest, uh, he reserve an easement uh, to connect to that development, only if it's commercial development. With that, the staff recommended the planning board approval. The planning board uh, felt like there was enough commercial with a convenience store, even though it's not on the uh, any of these maps, about a mile to the south. Uh, they felt like that that was adequate commercial, so uh, they voted to deny the request and send it forward. Uh, there was opposition at that meeting, and there's opposition here tonight. Commissioner Keith has a question. I do have a question, Mr. Lloyd. Um, this conditional use, the conditional use is based upon whether or not the um, applicant gets sewer to the area. Is that right? <clears throat> Yes. Okay. In other so, words, sewer would have to be, that, that is one of the conditions, I, and I would like to repeat that all the conditions in the packet the applicant has agreed to. Okay. So it's conditional use until he gets, until mm -hmm. he gets sewer, no, it, or it will continue to be a conditional use property until forever, even though after he's got sewer. It's going to continue to be conditional zoning. But Why? Because that's a condition. To it's a sewer. condition that sewer be present. And once it's conditional zoning on that property, and the, you approve or disprove, if this site plan was approved, that's all that could be developed on the property. If more needed to be developed, if he wanted, say, <clears throat> another type of business that's not included, and I believe it's medical and dental offices, a restaurant, and a ga uh, with, with gas station, or convenience store with gas station, if he wanted any other use uh, that would be allowed in the C1P, he would still have to come back as this is conditional zoning and add to it. So this is really to only allow those three uses it's advertised for. Okay. It, it initially became conditional zoning because he, he told the staff he was going to run sewer. <clears throat> you can't hold somebody to that on a regular rezoning request. So we said tell them to come back as a conditional zoning. That way we can put sewer, be present at the property as a condition. And that's why he did. Okay. <coughs> Is this at that intersection with the flashing light? No. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So I, I guess my concern was, I was, because I rode out there, and I came off of Dr. Bennett Road. I would never come off Dr. Bennett Road, probably at night, trying to turn right. uh, across going back to Fayetteville 87. Is there, have DOT or anything, I mean, that's just going to be a major, I mean, it's just, I can't even imagine trying to turn out. We don't know what DOT is ever going to do. They put the, as you well know, the reactionary, and they base whether <laughs> yeah, the activity at the intersection whether they'll go ahead and put a full fledged signal there or not. Well, at mean, this stage of the game, they don't. Yeah. They don't say. I, I just saw all the R10 that was down there, and I went through that neighborhood that was right there, and I, it, I was just it, coming out trying to make that left turn. I mean, I don't know how many accidents have happened there because I don't, you know, I right. know. Uh, Mr. Boots and I thought they talked about how they, every time he goes down, he goes down past that way. But uh, do we have any idea about how many? I don't know that you would know no, that. No, we, so if you don't, we get you traffic volume no, but statistics, but we don't get accident statistics. Yeah, it's just, right. well, okay. That was just, any other questions based on that? If not, I will open the public hearing. Uh, Madam Clerk, are there any speakers? We have three speakers in favor and two speakers in opposition. All right. If you call our first speaker in favor is Mr. Bill Maxwell. I'm out here. I've got a bad leg. I'm going to stand up here. Well, here. Yeah, it's going to be hard to be on my computer. Where is uh, that, that's fine, Mr. Oh, uh, we can hear you right there. That's fine. You can go from right there. Yes, sir. Well, it's good to see you, folks. Good to see you.
He's going to get you to do that microphone. I think the uh, problem he was talking about, you know, what you were talking about making a left turn, they probably got that down in Grace Creek where you turn and go in Grace Creek Elementary School. You turn, instead of turning left, you go down to the right. Did I do it now? Did y'all hear that? State brings some concrete separation out there, and you turn right and go about uh, 100 feet or so, and then turn back left again, is the way they're doing it. But I, I know that the owner wants to build this, and I know the seller, and uh, I think it's good use for it. Uh, I, I can't think of any other use for it. It's be too busy there for residential on that corner. Uh, I just want to come recommend that you approve it. Yeah, thank you, sir. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to ask them. All right. Thank you, sir. I'm glad you got the water sewer. They got the sewer thing straight because that was going to be a real problem. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Mr. Scott Flowers. Good evening. Good evening. I'd ask that I be recognized as the group representative and given five minutes to speak, Mr. Chairman, if you don't object. And which group is that? I, uh, I represent the owner slash applicant, uh, Mr. Chairman. But that's not a group. That's, you just get three, Mr. Oh, Flower. just three. Okay. That's well, it. Thank to get you. All I can that's get. a good way to try it. <laughs> how about a rebuttal? Well, that's long, quite all right. Go right I'm ahead. asking, how about a rebuttal? May I have a rebuttal, a three-minute rebuttal, You got three Mr. minutes Chairman? right there. Okay. Uh, uh, they haven't started yet. They were nice. They hadn't even hit it yet. Thank you. Madam Clerk, I have a handout for the board. Thank you. Uh, the handout will correspond with the PowerPoint presentation that I'll be going through quickly during my time. And thank you again for my time. My name is Scott Flowers. I'm an attorney with the Hutchins Law Firm. My address is 4317 Ramsey Street, and I represent the uh, owner applicant. Uh, the owner applicant is uh, Shiva Real Estate LLC. It's owned by Raj and Ketke. Bansall, who have been living in this community in the Wade area since 2005. The Bansalls own several convenience stores in Cumberland County and Columbus County, uh, which they operate. Mrs. Bansall is actually a graduate of Campbell University, and they're raising their two sons here in the Cumberland County community. So these are not outsiders uh, asking for this. These are local small business entrepreneurs that I'm sure we'd all agree we want to support in every way we can. How do you do this? Okay. So the board, uh, in order to approve this request, should find that the request, according to Section 505 of the county ordinance, that the request is reasonable and that it's consistent with the current land use plan. So those are the elements for the board to find, that the request is reasonable and that it is consistent with the current land use plan. And there are three land use plans that apply to this property, the 2030 <coughs> Growth Vision Plan, which was enacted in November of 08, the Land Use Policies Plan in January of 2009, and the South Central Land Use Plan, which was enacted in March 2015. I'm going to go through the relevant sections of each of those very quickly. The 2030 Growth Vision Plan, uh, first, uh, you'll see um, uh, policy area number nine uh, is to develop compatible commercial development. And policy number 9.5, is to have uh, smaller scale commercial development should be clustered in a nodal location. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, this development that's proposed is exactly that. It's clustered in a nodal location or an intersection with commercial property surrounding it. And here we have an example. This is from the land policies uh, plan. Each one of those red dots is a node. Uh, that's an intersection of a major thoroughfare such as Highway 87. And each one of those nodes is supposed to have commercial activity there. Um, the commercial development objectives from that plan are all met. Uh, if you look there, um, I won't go through each of them since my time is uh, so limited, uh, but every one of those criteria are met. And the South Central Land Use Plan, uh, again, every one of the criteria are met. This property is uh, in the urban area for the 2030 I'll growth strategy finish that map. Sentence. Go right here. Thank you very much. I'd ask you to look through the materials and 
Again, if you'll see. No, you just got to finish that sentence. Oh, okay. Your three minutes is up. I'll let you finish that sentence. Look through the plan and. Well, you'll see that this property is surrounded by commercial development, industrial development, and high density residential on all sides. There's really no reason that this request should be denied. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Our next speaker. Our next speaker in favor is San Hussein. Thank you, board members. I have seen your uh, uh, pictures on the yards and all this. So this is the first time I'm meeting you and thank you very much for serving our community. <clears throat> I am a civil engineer by trade. I've been doing uh, development for 28 years. I'm a North Carolina resident for 28 years and living in Cumberland County last 10 years. And uh, I have developed several, several churches, community, with Nikki Daly Haley in Columbia, South Carolina, Charlotte community, and I'm currently doing in Raleigh. I purchased this land also in exit 58, which is Highway 13, a similar situation. We have approved holiday in there and also travel plaza. And we are putting also 125 feet tall sign for the Eastover community. And uh, it's a gateway of uh, there, so we decided to put other one store here in uh, Doc Bennett Road. And it's a four lane road, and there's a, nobody wants to live four way lane. I have a myself house on uh, College Road. I'm selling last six months. Could not sell it because too much noise. We try to sell this property, the old owners, existing owners, for nine homes. He could not sell because of too noise. Same property. So three sites is a commercial. So this is the only one. We don't have this uh, R10. So we like to, if you can approve this, this will be good for, and it will create 110 jobs during construction and 46 job, permanent job for Cumberland County. So we appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Our first speaker in opposition is Mr. Charles Allen. Good evening. Good, evening. Good evening. My name is Charles Allen. I reside at 2233 Wilmington Highway, about two and a half miles from this site. I own the business that is being referred to as, as the commercial business in the area because mine's the only one that's in the area. There isn't any other commercial business, and there's no, uh, to my knowledge, within a couple, three miles, there's no uh, industrial. So I just wanted to make that point to start with. I'm in opposition to this for several reasons. Um, we are concerned about the, uh, the amount of traffic that crosses that road right there. Um, the question was, how many accidents have there been there? We've had nearly one a month in the last, probably for the last several years. Some of them have been uh, fatal. I understand that DOT wants to have a certain number of accidents before they consider it a uh, intersection. It's considered a crossroad right now. Um, I don't know how many it takes to, how many accidents it takes to get somebody to put a light up, but uh, we'll wait on them to see. Um, the, uh, the local people that I've talked to are not interested in having this. We've got a, uh, a gas station uh, 0 0.7 miles, 7 tenths of a mile from this interchange, so we really don't need another one. Uh, right across the street, we've got a large residential area that has 40 to 60 children, um, literally right there across the street. Um, I'm a little worried about that. The, uh, the idea of having a 24-hour uh, situation that's open for gas and beer sales and other things, uh, there's an awful lot of uh, other things goes on right in that corner. We don't need any more of that if we can help it. Um, the, um, the residential people I've talked to all up and down Doc Bennett and down past my uh, area have almost unanimously told me they're not interested in having another gas station right there. 
we know that we need to have uh, some sort of development there, but it's uh, been considered as rural residential, and that's what one reason we're there, because it's a residential area. Uh, I do want to tonight point out that there's quite a few here in favor of or in opposition of this, and if I could ask those folks to stand, please, that are in opposition. These folks either live or work within a mile to two miles of this location. Thank you very much. And uh, are not interested in having this, this type of development um, in this area here. Uh, I appreciate your time tonight, and I hope that you will consider the number of people that it's going to impact in a negative way uh, as opposed to just looking forward to some kind of de development. Thank you. Thank you. Our last speaker who is in opposition is Ms. Christy Allen. Um, I'm actually a representative from Grace Creek Villas. Does that mean that I have no. a little more time? Yes. Okay. Three good. minutes. All right, Christy Allen, 4516 Headwind Drive, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Um, when I first spoke at the planning board meeting last month, I expressed the very compelling human reasons why, as a homeowner, I didn't want a gas station nearby. Possible groundwater, you know, contamination, um, traffic on 87, as everybody's mentioned, decreased property values, and the concern for our safety and the safety of having an entrance to a gas station 264 feet from the entrance of our neighborhood, where more than 50 children wait for the bus and play outside every day. However, I understand that, um, you know, I'm a strong supporter of Cumberland County and someone who believes in land use planning, and I believe that it's a government tool that benefits all. So I wanted to make sure that my concerns were not just uh, and not in my backyard kind of concern mentality, but that I honestly evaluated the arguments the planning staff made. I think they're pretty smart. Staff had two major points for recommending the rezoning, as Mr. Flowers also pointed out, that the rezoning meets the text of the land use plan and that the site is south of the airport runway and not a typical place someone would want to live. It's true that the property can get public access, public water and sewer, has access to a collector street, and is in close proximity to light commercial. Even though none currently exists, however, I think it's important to note it doesn't probably exist for a reason. On Wilmington Highway, the one directly across, there's a number of family homes on that um, light commercial. And on the property directly across on Doc Bennett Road, which is directly behind our neighborhood, if you were to put a gas station there, that would mean that the properties adjoining the, the property line wouldn't be able to get um, FHA insurance when they got a mortgage when people were trying to buy their house. There's a U.S. HUD regulation that says that um, being within 300 feet of a property line of an um, underground storage flammable tank um, prevents you from getting mortgage insurance through the FHA. So to the point that the parcel meets the criteria by providing goods and services to existing neighborhood that may be located along a street that's transitioning from residential to non-residential, since 2005 when my husband bought his first home in Grace Creek Villa, 70 plus homes have been purchased or built in that neighborhood. To me, that says that this area continues to transition towards denser, res denser residential and non-residential and we must protect it. To motion two, about the parcel being south of the main runway for the airport, not typically residential development, I think we all know that it's the market that dictates what a buyer for residential finds typical and acceptable. And 70 plus homes mean that they don't mind living south of the runway. At the last meeting, the planning committee member voted to, the, the, the planning committee member who voted to approve the rezoning said, if we leave it R10, who's going to want to live on a four-lane property adjacent to commercial property? That's exactly why I'm here. I don't want to live adjacent to commercial property off a of four-lane highway. In land use planning, we must weigh individual landowner desires and what's best for the county as a whole. I understand that this parcel will mean a lot of money for the owners as the closest gas station in 95 and will probably create some jobs and pay a few attorneys. However, I do think that governing bodies have a responsibility to not resent a property for one person when it, um, without taking into account the impacts of the hundreds of others within a tenth of a mile. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other speakers, Madam Clerk? There are no further speakers. Well, there are no more speakers. I will close the public hearing, and I will call on Commissioner Keith. Thank you, Mr. Lloyd. You had mentioned that the, the property owner um, was going to have to put sewer in, and I'll be honest with you, I'm still not sure on this conditional use, but re regardless, how far, where does sewer come to? Where, where's sewer at right now, and where would they have to tie in? It's about 1,200 feet south. 1,200 feet south, he's gonna have to make a 1,200 foot line? Yes. To, to, 
and is that sewer going to be made uh, on that line? Is there any other residential property that is possibly on septic? Not not on the line. He'll his line will not help anybody on septic. Okay. What is sewer running per linear foot? Do you have any idea? I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay. So 1,200 feet. All right. Uh, could I clarify what you may still be confused a bit with? The original rezoning was to come through for a commercial rezoning. Uh, the staff would, would not have approved conditional zoning, a straight conditional zoning on septic. It was felt at that time by the yeah. staff. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand that, I w and I wouldn't have either. But the, only, the only way we could make him be sure that he would provide sewer is if he came back with a conditional zoning, and that was one of the conditions, so that's what he did. Or we'd have recommended denial to the planning board. Right. It, it really does. I can talk to you offline about it. it really, it's not going to affect things that much tonight. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Evans. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Lloyd, can you tell me what businesses could be erected there? What can be placed there other than a gas station? The only the ones he has listed, a restaurant, a convenience store with gas, and medical and dental offices. That's all. Only what he has listed and you see in your heading. That's all this permit would be for. And so I'm glad you brought that up. It's not just a gas station. Okay, It is a restaurant to go along with it, and it is medical and dental offices that this approval would be for. What type of medical offices? Do you have any idea? No, sir. Okay. Commissioner Keith. I, I want to follow up on Commissioner Evans. So if he didn't have sewer, what would he be related, re regulated to? Well, he um, only, only it would be a denial. He has to. He, he uh, has no. agreed. Well, what other, without without having sewer, he couldn't put commercial in. We would have recommended against it. it it's it's not a clear cut policy um, that sewer be present. Uh, some minor commercial or smaller scale commercial, the policies plan will call for. Uh, but in something this size, the staff felt should have can, to have sewer. Can you give me an example of something smaller scale? There's convenience stores out there, only convenience stores that do have septic. Oh, but it's four and a half acres, so. right? Right. Yeah, okay, thank you. Commissioner Booth. Okay, now the, that's what I was gonna follow up with Mr. Keeves. The gas station that's just a little further south on the right, yes, is sir. that on sewer, water, septic? Water and sewer. Water and sewer also, okay. And if you look at the, the aerial, chart that you you gave us in the in the presentation uh, for the agenda uh, is there water sewer anywhere else on that quad he said that uh, the other three were commercial use already are any of them restricted to having to have sewer there in order to have that commercial rent Are you talking about it at the intersection there? Yeah, the same intersection. Go there back to the, he's commercial. looking at the, uh, he can hold the map. He, the one you just had, that's it's yeah. the one that he had. Back one more. The C1P, I believe right at the south, south southern corner, the intersection is not. Um, so they were already zoned that, and that they don't have sewer. They were zoned that in between two residential and, and, zonings? Yes, and originally that neighborhood was done on on septic okay and um, is the c1p there now is that sewer or is that septic septic okay what about the mp and the cip across Go the back street to the other one i think he's looking at the other map with all of, all of those on right back up to okay it's vacant uh, the right mp there. across right the back street to the color one go back no one more. The, that's good even that has it okay okay that's vacant except for the um that's the one substation on the on the number one okay that commercial c1p is is vacant the mp across the street shows up it doesn't show much in the circle is vacant but it is rockfish reclamation facility okay. that's what the mp so that, is that's not residential correct okay. the rr to the north of that well you have this vacant c1p and the rr to the north um is that the green biz that's green biz so that's not residential Correct. That's agricultural with permits. We'll pull to agricultural. 
Uh, so the all the R's? the only thing that is developed on that particular slide is what's colored there, and that's the neighborhood, and then some single family housing to the north of Doc Bennett Road. All right. What are, what are the restrictions for CIP and MP? I mean, what what could like what Commissioner Evans asked? What could be built in the way it is right now on CIP and MP? Well, C1P is neighborhood commercial, as opposed to CP, which would be heavier commercial. Um, is a convenience store neighborhood commercial? Yes, sir. Okay. And what is MP? Is that more restrictive it's or is that least restrictive? industrial, planned industrial. It's the heaviest district we have, heavy industrial. Right. And this is across from the heaviest industrial zoning we have available? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? If not, I will entertain a motion. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Booth. I'm looking all around. It looked right there. I see. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would I would move that as to case P17-30, I would find the request for the rezoning consistent with the 2030 growth vision plan and any other applicable land use plan, that it's reasonable in the public interest for the reasons stated in the original recommendations of the planning staff. Second. It's been moved and second. Any questions? All those in favor? Voting in favor, Commissioners Keefe, Evans, Council, Lancaster, and Booth voting in opposition, Chairman Adams. Thank you. All right, and second motion then would be move to approve the request for rezoning to CIP plan local business zoning slash CZ conditional zoning. Second. It's been moved and second. All those in favor? Voting in favor, Commissioners Keefe, Evans, Council, Lancaster, and Booth voting in opposition, Chairman Adams. Thank you. Motion carries. Uh, next public hearing is a public hearing on proposed economic development incentive for Project Nano 2. I'm going to give everybody a chance to leave before we get started on the next one. We can have Kelly Spring come across the street. Who's going to live there? Well, well there's an invitation. that was talking to everybody in there unanimous not wanting it. We ready, Madam uh, Manager. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, item 4C is a public hearing on proposed economic development incentives for Project Nano 2. And um, before we open the public hearing, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask our county attorney, Mr. Moorfield, to um, share with us some details in the resolution that was included in the packet. And um, also Mr. Van Gans as well has some information to share um, for consideration before we open the public hearing. Glad to have you back in town. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Moorfield. I think Mr. Van Gans can start off. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure being here with you, and uh, um, I apologize as I stumble through this. Uh, it's my pleasure for the first time to bring this caliber and size project uh, to you. But uh, as uh, Amy had mentioned, your county manager, that we do have some things to get into the record. I appreciate Mr. Moorfield helping us get that done. This project would represent 140 jobs, an investment of $44 million, pay an average salary of $32,500. And uh, for the public that's not familiar, this would be a an advanced distribution center, an order fulfillment facility of approximately 650,000 square feet. Uh, of importance to be noted in the record, uh, this is a U.S. headquartered company. We're requesting that you consider it for incentives. Uh, it is considering the Cedar Creek Industrial Park. As part of this incentive, we're asking that you approve the sale of 
8.27 plus or minus 8 